record on here. How's it going? Nate Mumford, Director of Sales Engineering, as always, broadcasting live from my quarantine house here in Danbury, Connecticut, a home of now the official John Oliver Memorial sewage plant, by the way, in case you've been following that story. We passed a vote last Thursday. It's official. I'm very excited. Just saying. Um, hey, we're really excited for today's video. I'm going to get rid of this uh, broadcasting live shortly because we are live and all that good stuff. Um, put some stuff here, minimize all that good stuff. And let's talk about RCS onboarding. That's right. Uh, talking about uh, getting you through the onboarding process, whatever the RCS product is, be it Zeta, G Selector, uh, you can see here Next Gen, RCS News, Acquira, all that good stuff. Um, and uh, I'm joined today by Brian Willard. He's our Field Technician Services Director, as well as Adrian Guanipa. He's our G Selector Support Lead as well. And uh, these guys are the ones who are going to take you from kind of point A to point B, and they're the the true experts here of all kinds of installs. And so I like, you know, showcasing, of course, you know, different people here at RCS, but also uh, these guys are definitely, they've seen it all, they've converted it all. And so I wanted to bring them in here to kind of talk about, you know, again, ease your mind if you're talking about how you're going to uh, install Zeta and G Selector and all of that good stuff. So hello, guys. How's it going? How are you doing, Nate? Glad to be here. <laughs> hey, Nate. How are you doing? <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, so I thought for time purposes, we would just jump right in. Um, thank you V for checking in. I appreciate it. As always, if you have your questions, you can always comment on our, our little, you know, RCS live section here. You can also direct message us as well. Uh, live at rcsworks.com, Facebook messenger, all that good stuff. Usually after these RCS lives, I kind of chat in and check a couple of inbox stuff too. So you can always check in if you want to on there as well. Um, I'm going to try to keep this session to onboarding. If you have any questions about just generic Zeta or G Selector questions, definitely feel free to comment below. I'll make a point to address those afterwards as well. And as you know, we do this every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time uh, as part of our RCS Live series. So I thought I would just dive right in here. I have some documents from both Brian and Adrian. I got some, some URLs to showcase as well. And let's just talk about the overall process. And I just want to start off by saying, you know, this is something that, you know, we're here to help you with. So we've already had the point where you've probably talked to me and I probably showed you either Zeta or G Selector and we're moving forward. And now we're talking about essentially the installation and configuration process, getting your data into the RCS environment. And I just want to start off by saying, this is something that, you know, we are here to help you on. This is not a you activity. This is a we activity. And our goal is to get you whatever you need to feel comfortable and as well as operating at maximum capacity when you launch. So we've had different scenarios, and Brian can attest to this. We've had users who kind of want to ease into Zeta, so they'll have kind of two systems operating at the same time. We've had, you know, G Selector. We've converted, built databases from scratch with Adrian. Um, there's a lot of things we can do. We've had universities that didn't have a digital library that wanted to create one. Um, lots and lots of stuff. So I thought we'd first kind of talk about, Brian, if you will, the, the Zeta process. And Adrian, feel free to jump in as well uh, with the G Selector side of things. But let's first talk about, okay, so we, we purchased Zeta or G Selector. What's the first steps? And we'll start with Zeta first. Well, Nate, as you know, you kind of mentioned that, you know, demoing is what your area of expertise is, and then you move it on to the sales and the build process. And I just want everybody to know that this is, uh, by the time we actually get on site and start putting a system in place, 90% of it's done because of where we start with the process. Nate is intimately involved, you know, at the part of the design and then it goes to our sales engineers and they actually bring in myself or my team and Adrian, even in part of the sales process to start to diagram it because the goal is that as much information at the start. So it's a very, you know, process that we gather a ton of information is the biggest thing and we make sure that we design the system that's going to be specific for your site. One of the greatest things about Zeta G Selector, all of our products is we are very flexible. I see the Zeta No Limits ads everywhere now, and that's sort of what it is. You know, of course, we're very, can be very specified. So we design the system that's going to specifically fit your individual 
site, station, facility. And then from there, we start gathering information. We start getting build process. If you're getting hardware from us, it's getting build up, you know, we're doing that. And so that when it ships, the next stage would be when it gets on site, then we start talking about data conversion, you know, bringing in your data from your previous system. We try to bring in close to as much as we can when it comes to audio and information. We're going to send you checklists and a big long intro document, Nate, that you have that tells you all the stuff that we want you to do. Um, not even the checklist, uh, the intro part. That's just the checklist. We'll send you an intro first that hey, you can just scroll through there just to show how much stuff that we want you to start thinking about before we even start contacting you. We're saying, okay, getting everyone involved, you know, talk to your engineer, talk to your traffic director, talk to your program directors, start gathering your information, all this sort of stuff. And Adrian is even worse than me. He wants to know your blood type before <laughs> he'll even do a G selector conversion. So I'm just it. but that's, that's what we're saying. It's, it's a process. And I'm reiterating that it's not something where you make the sale and then you won't hear from us for six weeks. As soon as you sign on the line, you're going to be getting pestered by myself, my team, Adrian, we want as much information. We want to design your network here. So a lot can be done ahead of time. And again, we are there as a partner and to help. And we need just as much information from you as you need from us. And that's how the situation, that's how we can make the situation go perfectly. Absolutely. Yeah. And just, just to summarize here too, in case you're watching this and going, Nate, you're scrolling way too fast. I'm not expecting you to memorize this document. I'm just kind of showing you as we're talking here. But again, to reinforce Brian's point, you know, what we found in our experiences, the more information we have, the smoother it goes. It's one of those things like, for example, when we get on site and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I forgot to call my traffic department, especially during COVID times, you know, with people being in and out of the office, either being in site or in a Zoom training session. You know, we don't want to have it where, oh, I forgot to do this. So that's why Brian and Adrian have all these questions to ask of you, because we want to make sure we have everything covered. And it's great because they really dot the I's and cross the T's. Um, Adrian, anything you want to mention on your end? Yeah, uh, totally. Uh, definitely. The part when it comes to uh, what Brian mentioned is, is, is exactly the same uh, on the G-selectors. And uh, if, you're, if you're getting Zeta and G-selector, for instance, or if you're getting the whole suite, including Aquara, uh, definitely we're, we're going to guide you through the entire process. Um, like we always say, this is not a you situation. This is a we situation. Uh, we're holding hands, uh, trying to make sure that uh, where we guide you through the entire process, step by step. Uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, just like uh, Brian has a checklist, we also have a checklist on the G-selectors end um, that is specific for G-selector. If you're only interested in getting that at the moment, uh, we definitely have, uh, we talk about uh, the conversion part of it, uh, we talk about the installation part of it, the training uh, it's all very detailed, impor important information in there. Um, and as you follow along, uh, by the time you get to the point where you're getting your hands on the product, uh, we already have, like Brian, in, in this case, we already have everything done. We have the conversion done, the installation is all done, uh, and it's just a matter of getting you trained and uh, fully up to speed. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, your, your mic popping, Adrian. Don't you love Zoom? Sorry. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's like a heads up. Um, by the way, if you can comment here if you have any questions on the onboarding process, feel free to chime in. Like, for example, Meg from our Acquira Traffic Department is checking in saying hello. Hello, Meg, as always. Um, and so, yeah, so again, this checklist idea, the idea that we want to get all this information ahead of time so we know, um, you know, to help you out what to do there. Um, Brian, anything else you want to add on there? Uh, just that uh, Meg should be in the process of working on database creation right now while she's watching this Facebook Live because, yes, we also handle Acquira onboarding here, which is, of course, our traffic system. And we're heavily focused on, on G Selector and Zeta in this session, but also Acquire our traffic product and the symmetry and the integration between them all. You know, you have Adrian and I both on here, and it's just because we luckily have been very, very busy here at RCS with new installations and new stuff that we just can't handle all of it on our own, but we all are a team. Adrian and I talk almost every day. Adrian bothers me 
every day to update, you know, my information on Freshdesk and which is our internal of how is this installation doing? Brian, have you reached out here? And the same thing goes with Acquira. Um, and each individual product can stand on its own. You know, we've integrated with all other, you know, traffic systems and music schedulers, but then we also all communicate internally great between all of them. So you're going to hear from probably multiple parties. And sometimes we like that. It's a, I think of it more as a project, you know, and that's where onboarding has come from. That's, you know, the hot sort of word in last year's we're onboarding you, which is just not pure installation and training. It's a detailed step-by-step -step, depending whatever product you have and what suite of products. And we do certain steps along the way and certain orders of how we want to do things because our, really our goal is when our team gets on site in a situation or if we're doing it virtually remote training with G selectors that are acquire that the training and getting over the finish line of putting the system in play and on the air is what we're focusing on. We don't want to focus on getting last minute audio or getting a ton of audio in or making sure that the, the hardware or the satellite GPIOs or stuff is coming down. This is all stuff along the way. So it really is something we guide you over a process which could be months or you know just a couple weeks if it's a fast one but it all depends mostly on you being a partner with us and we're always here questions keep them coming we'll call we'll hound you we become sort of part of your project manager but a co-project manager i want to reiterate that that we really like to have somebody on the client side take the lead and we call them uh, the project champion, the project manager, and we will go back and forth and get it all going. And it's become great. And our customers are great and our teams are great here. And we've had a lot of successful, you know, launches on everything. And that's our goal to always get it where it's seamless, almost where your listeners won't hear any difference, you know, except a much better product, you know, after you switch to one of ours, but no disruptions. And again, getting your data and making sure that you're not off the air, that there's anything like that. So that's that's our goal all the time. Yeah, and I can tell you too that this is, um, you know, Adrian and Brian have both done extensive step-by-step um, -step checklists as we go along to make sure that um, we didn't forget anything, you didn't forget anything. As I said, dot the I's, cross the T's um, to make sure that we understand that, you know, we – we're aware on that process. We're kind of helping you out. Because let's be honest, if you're transitioning from one either automation system or a music scheduler or a traffic system, yes, that's a burden on you. That's a burden on you and your staff. You know, it's new things. You're, it's unfamiliar territory. And we want to be the ones that say, hey, we got those small details covered. We're the ones that are going to say, okay, hey, by the way, did you know us? Did you, do you know what this is going to be? Or did we check and see, you know, what is your automation? What's your scheduler? What's your traffic software? and all of that. So um, both Adrian and Brian have done a phenomenal job of not only documenting this checklist to make sure we have the information, but also that we're, we're going to hound you. If, if, we, if you tell us, hey, I want to do the install on this time, we're going to be, hey, it's a week out. Are we good? Are we missing something? Uh, Adrian is great in that checklist as well. Um, Adrian, anything you want to mention on that? No, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, it's all about uh, keeping uh, you know everything uh, documented, but it's also all about following uh, that checklist. Uh, you know, again, we have a checklist for uh, pretty much the entire project, uh, and yeah, the, the the project may include different products, uh, but that's definitely part of the whole the whole case. Uh, if you want to. Uh, uh, you know, if you want to include additional information or anything that will be useful uh, should be included uh, in the in the original information that we receive. But anything that you think of, like, hey, you know, by the way, uh, like you said, I have a, you know, I have this uh, this particular scenario that I want to cover uh, when it comes to converting from either from Zeta, uh, from, 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 from that system to Zeta or from that other music scheduling system to G Selector. We're here to help you to get that uh obviously uh transition and then get you with what the best product that you that you're uh, that you're getting basically Absolutely. and by the way thank you to duncan james and florencia for checking in as well you know we are live here so if you question for me brian or adrian feel free to uh to comment below and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions um we're trying to stick to onboarding but if you have any zeta or g sector or acquirer or whatever question you have i usually uh 
do some direct messaging afterwards and kind of talk about some of uh, your issues or your questions or how to's and tips and tricks and stuff like that too. So, um, so let's talk about first, we talked about the initial process, getting all the information, collecting everything, knowing everything. And then let's talk about, um, you know, we have all the information collected and let's talk about booking uh, the actual dates and some differences between, you know, the G selector installation process, the G selector installation process, and then the two combined. So, um, in acquire as well. So Brian, let's, uh, let's start with you in regards to, all right. So I have, uh, I have purchased Zeta. I have, um, given you all the information we need to collect. What's the next step? What can I do to start this kind of this process? And, and of course we're, we're very flexible, Nate. And that's the first thing I want to say is just because I'm outlining, you know, this is the, this is the standard or this is how we go by. doesn't mean that we're rigid in that way, because with radio and customers, everything is evolving and is different sometimes a specific site i say that because a lot of times for how when we put a new system where we have multiple products involved of ours you know say g selector zeta and acquira we have found it's best if you're getting all three from us that you should go to g selector first you know because g selector when it's in play with zeta is much more of the backbone of the system for everybody who's familiar with g selector um, and Zeta for that matter, either one, or if you're not, we have the living log, living asset scenario where we're not talking about flat files or anything. We're talking about real time reconciliation, log changes, all that between G selector and Zeta. And now there's a little bit more, and Adrian can attest this, and Nate, you else as being a program director, there's a little bit more of a learning curve switching from music schedulers than there would be from automation, just because the automation part, I consider the engineering, you know, that sort of thing where the art of radio is G selector. Mm -hmm. And so we know with engineering and science, there's a lot of times there's zeros and ones, there's black and white, but with art, it's a lot of interpretation. And so everybody can do it a little bit different. So that's why we always like to get the G selector portion done. It's hard to do both at the same time because that's just going to, you know, explode with way yeah. too much stuff. And it makes it, you know, a little too complicated, not for us, we're used to it, yeah, for but staff. for the users themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So not to say we haven't done that, we, we can do it if we need to do it. But the best way to do it is if you're going is to get moved over to G selector, give the program directors a little time to digest and get the right schedule they want. Because again, that's where the sound is coming from. And then Zeta, the operational part, we can train on that. The same thing goes for acquire. If we threw acquire in the mix, we would like to do that one after both G selector and Zeta, because there's a lot of data to move over in a traffic system and acquire is just not traffic. It's traffic and accounting and billing mm -hmm. and all that. Plus so a lot of contracts in that. Right. So, so again, that would be the order, but we've done it separately. Adrian knows we've done Zeta before brought G selector and after we've done acquire up. So, and then each of those products again, can be on their own standalone sort of thing. And the same goes for that. I wouldn't try to do, and I won't speak for Adrian, but I think he agrees. I wouldn't try to, you know, buy G selector today and try to launch it next week, you know, because there's just way too much, you know, you have to get your hands on it kind of thing. And the same thing where Zeta, because of, you know, we're usually having to interface with your existing hardware. We have more and more facilities buying new equipment, new studios. So we could get say Zeta up and running in parallel, as you mentioned earlier, Nate, but a lot of times we have to use your existing audio chain, satellite receivers. So it makes it much more of a, a, a crunch time to where we have to say, okay, we need a flip over date because we can't run both at the same time and to properly do it. So that's where they're on Zeta will say, okay, here is the date we're going to be on site. And while we're on site, we should launch that week or the next week, just because we have to, you know, move equipment and move studios where with G selector and Acquira, you have a little bit more time because it's not hardware interfacing to learn those systems up and get all the information in there. And I, I'll defer to Adrian more on that one on the G selector side. And before you say, yeah, it, I just absolutely. want to say one thing. Don't forget about Zeta yeah. Cloud-based disaster recovery as well. If you have an existing Zeta system looking to add Zeta Cloud disaster recovery, that's also part of this process as well. I forgot to mention that. Go ahead, Adrian. No, I was going to say just uh, just as well uh, is is definitely uh, the key. Uh, we we have done 
uh, conversions and installations in, in any sort of order. Uh, you know, we've done it, uh, Zeta first, uh, deselector later. But yeah, the, the best, if you ask, what, what would be the best the recommendation? Uh, it would be to do it all at once. You want to do it uh, Zeta first. Like if you're getting both products uh, or if you're getting the entire suite, uh, awesome. Uh, I would say, yes, it's best to do uh, G selector first, uh, maybe the week before Zeta goes in. Uh, and then that will be it. that way you will be involved and you will have your hands on uh, the, 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 the scheduling part of it, which is, uh, as Brian mentioned, uh, Zeta is, is more like the engineering sort of uh, the part of the process or the project. But when it comes to scheduling, uh, it's essentially what the feel of the station is going to be like, uh, what your rotations are going to be like. So all of that has to be done ahead. Uh, it, it will be better if it's done ahead. But if, if for some reason uh, you require that, no, it needs to be done all at the same time, uh, well, we can manage. We can definitely help you on that process. But uh, it's definitely something that we want to do ahead of time. Uh, and yes, we do have different, different options uh, uh, coming from other uh, scheduling software. Or if you have nothing, if you're coming from mm -hmm. scratch, really, uh, we can definitely help you along the way. Uh, if you have nothing, uh, typically, uh, we want to go and say, okay, well, first thing we want to do, if, if you have Zeta or if, you, if you're actually getting Zeta and you're coming from nothing really, uh, first thing we want to do is get some sort of a list uh, of uh, a spreadsheet with the content that you want to import. Uh, maybe we, instead of converting a G-selector database, we want to go in the direction of converting Zeta first and then we pre-populate G-selector with that data, uh, which makes it a lot easier, uh, but again, it's, in this case, it's not to make it easier for us, it's to make it easier for you. So then um, it will be less tasks for you to do, uh, so then you can focus on getting on the air rather than focusing on uh, uh, issues uh, in this particular case. So the, the, what you see there that Nate is presenting is, um, is, is kind of like our, uh, our uh, spreadsheet look uh, of what we require uh, as, uh, as basic information. So if you're converting from nothing, uh, or if you have uh, some uh, other database or uh, scheduling system that uh, can export information, this is the sort of information that we typically require, uh, which will be the ID, which is your primary ID, title, artist, album, runtime, category. Again, this is the bare default, uh, the bare requirement. Anything else is optional. And we encourage, uh, actually, that you actually uh, uh, get us as much information as you can. Obviously, like if you have information that can be uh, configured as part of the attributes of the, of the music, like if you have tempo, artist, if you have texture, sound code, all that good stuff, the vocal, like uh, if it's either male, female, all that will help you after the conversion is done, after when you're implementing your station, if you're creating something from scratch, this will be the good part that, that you need to think about before you even get to the point where you send us that list. That will be the, the thing to do. Like, let me focus on this first. Uh, let's give these guys uh, all the data uh, so then we can, we can start from something that is, is going to be a great product. I just want to give Adrian credit here. First off, number one, we swear, Brian will test this, Adrian's mic worked perfectly fine until I hit record, and then all of a sudden his mic started popping. Uh. It's a Zoom thing. I got to do research. I, the same thing happens to me. So it, it, Adrian's credit, I know his mic is popping. It's all right. Uh, uh, two, I'll check the recording later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two, um, you know, Adrian, you know, to give Adrian's credit again, he was showing me all of the ways that you can do conversions and convert data and all that good stuff. But when I tell you we can take any metadata you want and put it anywhere you want, I really mean we can put anything anywhere. We have access to all the fields in G Selector. I mean, in G Selector 4.0, uh, we now introduce what the the 99 user defined fields that's coming on the pipeline as well. So we'll have essentially 99 plus fields for you to put in metadata. So if, if there's something you want converted, you know the idea here is we're looking at this section right here, right? All we care about is as long as you tell us this is the ID, this is the title, this is the album. As Adrian was saying, this is the male. This is the female vocal. This is the rock pop sound code. This is an attribute I care about. It could be, I always, I always love saying this. It's the Brian sound code. It's the Adrian sound code. 
I don't care what that means, but it's important to you. I want to put that in your G Selector library, so we'll do that as well. Um, <laughs> yes, Dave, thank you. Dave was checking in. He goes, we totally believe you, winky face. Yes, we swear, we swear. Uh, thanks, Dave. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we can take any data you want. We can convert it as well. So uh, for time purposes, because I know that the three of us can talk for hours on end about this, this is an, a Zeta pre-installed checklist uh, and document. I know I kind of skimmed it earlier. I've been kind of uh, highlighting it as we were talking. If if you didn't get to finish it and you want to have a copy, just let us know, comment. I'll email it to you and all that good stuff. Um, there's this other checklist we showed here that Brian gave me. I don't think we talked about this one, but this was the other checklist, right, right Brian? Yep. So we kind of have a, a pre-install one stuff we'd like to get done and then just sort of a, a, a guide of what we'll knock out while we're on site as well. Because in, in today's world, it's just not for us as as managers of installation and that kind of thing. But for customers as well, you kind of want a, a bullet point, point by point, you know, what do we need to get done and in what order we need to get stuff done. So it just makes it that much more easy. So there would be these checklists that we always send ahead of time, just so you get a feel of how the installation is going to go because everybody's busy. And especially in COVID times right now, you know, not everybody may be in the office. So pe having a good idea of what will be done on day one, day two, the order of stuff is far more, you know, important these days than ever before. But it was something we even did, you know, in the past, just because, you know, you got to make sure that somebody may have an air shift. You know, there's rare there that a program director doesn't have an air shift now, or that the traffic director may not be doing three stations. So allotting that time and planning out the process ahead of time with these checklists and information helps it go smoother. Yeah. So let's, um, let's migrate here to some of these URLs and the bookings and the upgrades. And uh, now obviously with, with uh, Brian and Zeta, you know, because we have the engineering aspect, a little more hands-on will kind of help dictate when we're going to be on site or off site. Um, anyone want to comment, Brian, in regards to Zeta and scheduling? Uh, usually how far out do we schedule it? How does that usually the average scenario in regards to Zeta and installation? In the the main difference with Zeta, as we'd say, with something along with G Selector or Acquira is is because we're dealing much more with hardware and infrastructure. So that's going to dictate much more when we become piece of it. Because of course, your Zeta system can't go on the air if it can't get to your air chain, or if you don't have audio cards, or if you don't have computers for that matter to run on. So that's why it's not so much we can put an open ended. Um, like make your appointment like Adrian can explain with G selector we have appointments and stuff because it's much more software and it's training so we can schedule that a little bit ahead of time and get the get the database conversion but because of Zeta we're reliant on either you purchasing your hardware through us getting it built up which we do in our manufacturing which I'll always suggest you know our guys in manufacturing build these systems they sit on boards with hp and dell of all the manufacturers and customize servers and workstations that optimize our products and we qa on that stuff so i know a lot of people provide their own hardware and that's perfectly fine but there is definitely a level of expertise and comfort level if you get the stuff from us um, just because we know it's going to work in that matter and we're always evolving that build process. So of course, that would be the first thing is you have to make sure the hardware is there. If it's a huge system, it's just 50 computers. Our guys are quick, but it may take two or three weeks to build that up and a couple more weeks to get on site. And then you have to unbox it, get it networked, get it online. Because if you see in some of the pre-installation lists, we, we can't do anything until the machines are up and networked, we can't start to transfer audio. So that's why the scheduling process is very fluid with Zeta because sometimes the size of the system are built, parts may need to be ordered. You may have to schedule it, you know, if you're downtown or at a college, you know, the shipping department, get contract engineers, all that. So that's why it's more, we'll work along the way and it's a shooting timeline. So, but the average is it's probably about six weeks from when you sign on the dotted line to that we can come on site. You know, it may be quicker in an emergency scenario. We could build something up quick. It may be longer. And that's how we'll work with you and work within our scheduling. But usually that's a target that we can start to talk about even during the sales process, as you yeah. see, Nate, because they'll bring in, we say, okay, we have to be in by March. Can we put something on the timeline? Like, yep, well, get it signed, get it built, and we can work with that. So we're always open 
to meeting your needs. And you know me, I'm very honest to I'll say, okay, well, yeah, sure, we can get it done in four weeks, but this, this and this has to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's always sort of a moving target with that, because there's so many other variables at play, specifically hardware and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And, um, and again, every scenario is different. Every client is unique. And so obviously, as Brian was saying, flexibility on our behalf is very much, you know, we will cater this install to you and what you need and what you're comfortable doing. Um, especially in, and also making a point too, if you're using Zeta, probably you've already talked to me. We've already discussed a game plan. We've probably brought in Brian talking about machines and all that good stuff. So there's a very, very high chance that if, if we're talking Zeta, you already have, you know, set a timeline and expectations and all that good stuff between Brian or myself and, and more of that. Um, in the words of G Selector, in the world of G Selector, uh, Adrian. So let's just use the example right now. We said earlier, if you have G Selector and Zeta, we try to combine the two where we define when Zeta is coming in, when the hardware is coming in, then we schedule essentially a G Selector about two weeks prior to that to make sure, again, we're not overloading your staff and we'll make sure they're comfortable digesting the information. But let's kind of transition to just G Selector by itself, Adrian, if you want to kind of guide us through the process. So at this point in time in the onboarding process, uh, you know, we have, we want to get G Selector. We essentially, we next step, we got your onboarding letter. We talked about the conversion stuff. What's the next step in that? Talk about the booking process. Yeah. So uh, I hope my mic sounds okay. Yeah, it's still popping, so, but we'll keep going. Yeah. So, sorry, Dave. Um, yeah, sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll look into it. Um, so yeah, typically the, once we have all the information and we have, uh, uh the, the database that we're converting, uh, we're processing, uh, the, the following step is actually to get, uh, your system, uh, installed. Uh, and if we're just talking about G selector by itself, uh, the, the onboarding details or the welcome note, the package that you receive with all the checklists, uh, will include, uh, a link that will guide you through uh, where do you need to go. In this case, it's the page that Nate has opened. And uh, this, is this will allow you to book an appointment ahead of time for you to uh, get your deselector installed. Uh, this is in case, because like as Nate said, uh, every site is different. Uh, every situation is different. Every client is different. You may have different needs. Uh, so in some cases we have uh, uh, clients that they want to have their own IT department do the installations. And we also uh, provide instructions, detailed instructions uh, to what to do, where to get the installer file, uh, how to install it. Every detail is provided along the process. But if you don't have the flexibility of having an IT department that will help you through this process, or you just simply need help, uh, because you don't have time to deal with an installation, that's where we're here for. So uh, you go in and you book your appointment. Uh, that is to say, as um, is, this is not just saying, uh, go now and book an appointment. It's more like once you go through the process, uh, as you're following along the checklist, uh, that will be included. So then you can go to the page, uh, book your appointment based on your time zone and find your dates. Uh, if you have, you have your dates, uh, we have dates that are opening uh, uh, weekly, so we will obviously show more dates in there, but typically uh, you can schedule that depending on the needs. Uh, if, say for instance, uh, that day that Nate's showing in there, uh, October the 27th, no, that's too far ahead, well, we can definitely help you. Uh, if it's something that needs to be happening uh, uh, sooner, uh, we can definitely do it, uh, but it's all happening within the same project. Yeah. Uh, moving, moving along, once you have that uh, booked, uh, then comes the part of uh, when is the training actually, actually happening? So if you're doing both Zeta and G Selector, typically we prefer that uh, G Selector is it's training, it's done first. Um, but if that's not happening, uh, you can also book it uh, and say, okay, when are you gonna be ready to do your training? Uh, because um, even though uh, you may you may not be buying hardware from us for your server, or you may. Uh, there's still some process and some things that will have to be uh, to be in place before we can actually go and do a training. Uh, like your data needs to be uh, sent to us. We need to be uh, working on that database. We may have questions about the database. So uh, doing it like 
one day it's not gonna it's not gonna be realistic. Uh, even though we've done certain things uh, in, in, in some kind of a uh, quickly uh, fashion. But in this particular case, it's best that we are prepared ahead uh, mm -hmm. to help you uh, get the best results. So this onboarding checklist will give you also a link where you can go in and you can book your G Selector training. That will take you to the page that Nate is showing now. Uh, Again, this page is it comes from the from the package that we send. Uh, it's a unique uh, ID and a unique information just for you for the ticket that we're um, uh, that we're actually working on or, or the onboarding project that we're working on. It may be a G Selector Zeta uh, onboarding ticket, or it may be just a G Selector ticket, or it may include other products as well. So if you click next uh, there, Nate, uh, you okay. basically will find. Uh, your time zone, so you pick that from the list. Once you have that said, then you can go ahead and, and obviously uh, book your appointment in there. So this will give you the part about when the training starts. Training basically uh, is it consists of three, uh, it really depends on, on the client, but most likely by default, it's, um, it's a three, it's a, it's a week. So the week basically entails uh, you're gonna get um, uh, three sessions, uh, one hour each and two follow-up sessions. So this all will be prepared for you. And what you see right now is day one, day two, day three. Uh, so if Nate goes ahead and he selects the 27, uh, he's going to um, look at, uh, you have to click on the 27 there. Yeah. I don't know if you want me to yeah. submit or not, that's why. No, yeah, yeah. So I was once, told, I was told don't that, actually book one because then I'll have to go and delete it afterwards. That's fine. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and click it. So then essentially, what that's going to do is going to automatically get you on the calendar. Uh, so you don't have to go in and say, hey, so what are we doing? When are we booking? You have the flexibility of going in and you can book it on your own. Uh, you can, for some reason, if for some reason you need to postpone it uh, an, ex an extra week or you have to pick a different time, uh, you can always uh, come back to the same link provided on the package and then you can cancel it. Again, this is the flexibility that you get uh, if you're doing G Selector uh, uh, with the onboarding portion of it. Uh, with with Set I involved, as, as, as Brian mentioned, it's a, a little bit different because uh, it really, there's a lot of other variables that we have to think about. So even if you're getting G Selector and Zeta, uh, the variables are maybe similar. So if we have, obviously, if you're booking a training uh, the week prior, Zeta is, is, is getting installed, uh, you have to think about like, well, what if I want to postpone it? Well, if you postpone that training, uh, when are you going to get G Selector? Because we're installing both G Selector and Zeta uh, at the same time, or, or you're going to need it essentially. So you need this training uh, to be booked uh, ahead of time. So that's important uh, to follow uh, along on those checklists. Yeah. And so I think uh, to kind of uh, summarize a lot of this, so again, the G Selector, three one-hour sessions, two half-hour follow-ups. You can schedule it on our portal. Uh, by the way, all of this, don't forget to memorize any of these links or any of that stuff because shout-out to Bianca, uh, who works with Adrian as well. One of the things that we do is we essentially, when you you know book the G Selector or when you rather get G Selector, we'll give you an automatic kickback email. We'll be there. Bianca's our liaison with Adrian. He'll be reaching out for conversions. He'll be checking in on both the installation times. You know, our RCS support department will be there to help install everything. And of course, if for ever reason we get into a pickle, of course you can you can each reach out to Bianca, Adrian, Brian, myself, your sales rep, whoever it may be. Uh, we'll be definitely helping you out here as well. So definitely don't feel that you're alone in this process. That's kind of the biggest thing we're trying to trying to showcase here that yeah this is kind of the normal process like everything is all good in the world there's no hiccups it's not like you know live radio kind of thing it's not like you had a microphone that worked fine then all of a sudden it started popping so you know we're here to work with you you know that's that's the idea here too so again we have some websites uh for booking times and by the way for this bookings rcsworks.com slash bookings this also counts for generic upgrades right brian and adrian Yes. Yep. So yeah. So you'll see there, there is a Zeta portion there. And of course, yeah, we, we haven't released you booking your Zeta install yet just because of, you know, so many different variables mm -hmm. involved, but eventually, you know, as we, we evolve and get better and we can get better timelines on, you know, stuff, we could probably implement that. And we're always evolving that in the back end too. So we have thought about that, but this would be like, if you're a current Zeta customer, 
already or a G Selector customer, next gen RCS news, if you wanted to update to the latest version, that's where you could come on to this page too and book that and schedule that process. Cough, cough, cough. Zeta 520.1 beta users. Cough, cough. <laughs> you can tell Make everybody that I need 520.1 beta users. Yes. Go to the five one. It's cough. So, and, and <laughs> yes, and I'll agree, Nate, it's a, it's a great version. Yeah. And if you are, of course, you know, you get special, um, you know, access to a ton of different people, you know, in special lines, if you are a beta user and you get the latest features, which in 520 are really slick and really, yeah, cool. really slick. And G selector four nine zero, which by the way, if you noticed, uh, I believe I posted a Facebook event for that, um next week we're doing the g Sutter 490 we're debuting that that's gonna be really cool with the clock structure so yeah beta users uh we're looking for both beta users for both products as well um i gave myself 40 minutes to t talk about this uh i usually do 30 minutes but i know you and i would all talk more than we should um so just to recap again flexibility we're here to work with you on the zeta world you probably have already talked to brian and myself to get that process rolling um, and then setting an expectation for timelines. Both AJ and Brian have set really, really good uh, benchmarks, checks to make sure that we're, we're in line to make sure the install is going smoothly and accordingly. Uh, as Brian joked around, we will hound you for information because we want to make sure that even though you're crazy, you shouldn't have to stress about our installation, right? We're here to help you be comfortable, understanding the software, learning the software, and we're here to make sure to guide you along the process as well. Um, so to kind of uh, last minute here, if you guys want to get your questions in or comments, I know Dave was checking in earlier, as well as uh, Duncan and James uh, or in Valencia. So if, for example, if you guys want to get your last minute questions in, let me know, comment here for myself, Brian, or Adrian. Um, I think we'll do the last uh, check. Anything you want to add, Brian? We'll start with you first in regards to um, anything we want to miss or just to recap. Just in, and again, Nate, you know, we kind of talked before that um, when when we have new customers talking to us or you in the sales process, one of the biggest concerns is bringing in your data, you know, kind of thing. So I just want to reiterate this for for Zeta and for G Selector and for Acquira and News, all that we have a, a lengthy history of being able to bring in your important data. I always kind of say it, it's analogy. It's think of it if, if you're moving homes that kind of thing. There's some things you don't need to take with you. You know, you don't need to take the appliances because there's probably newer appliances in, in the house. So I compare that to, you know, like clocks, you know, Zeta does clocks and programming better than a lot of other systems. Same with G select or that. So we won't bring the appliances, but there's things that you can't replace, you know, like family photos, or maybe, you know, that new fur, that sort of thing. So that's the data that we try. We start with the most important stuff. So of course, title, artists, songs, but then we can bring marks. So as much as that you can provide to us from your existing systems, we can get into the new system and even maximize. So that's a, that's a question. I just, it's always a question we get with a new customer. Well, can you bring in my song? Can you bring in my bits? Can you bring in my shows, all this stuff? And the answer is almost 100% of the time, all of it. Yes. If you can get us that data in the files or the spreadsheets, then we can get it in. And I also just like, you know, we're, we're very North American US driven here, Nate. I just want to throw this out because we do have a lot of international washers. We have offices all around the world that do all of our products and on board as well. So I just like to give them a shout out. We communicate yeah. with them and learn from them. They learn from us on the best processes to do this. Just not are we a little family between here with us three and everything. We communicate with all of our international offices and they're doing all these same product installations as well. So we have a big team that we're constantly adapting and evolving. That's those checklists and that intros are changing all the time. Not only are our products evolving, our processes to get you on board and do a successful installation are changing almost daily. So it could be different. So we're just trying to achieve to get you from point A to point Z on the air the best way we can. Mm -hmm. uh, Adrian, anything you want to add or, or mention? Um, yeah. So uh, aside from that, it's, it's also uh, very important to point out, um, also as Brian mentioned earlier, uh, it's important to have that key person, uh, the person that uh, we always uh, go back to, uh, the person that we can go back and ask questions. Because uh, again, 
uh, not necessarily, you know, if you have a list of people, uh, typically the, the, the welcome package, uh, as we call it, uh, or the welcome email, uh, we send it via email. Uh, but that information, if you keep it to yourself and you don't share it with your team, like, uh, you know, you have an IT or you have the, the operations manager or the project manager uh, the, that is in charge of getting everything done, uh, then obviously, you know, the, some things may, may, may end up not getting uh, uh, in, in place here. So essentially what we want is to make sure that uh, everyone involved in this project is listed uh, and, and it's included. Uh, okay. So then everybody can be in the loop and everybody can offer uh, insights like, hey, you know, what about, uh, you know, we used to do this kind of thing. Uh, can we do it here? Uh, there's always questions about that sort of thing. So it's always good and important to have that person, uh, that lead person that will, that will be our, uh, our, our guy or our girl that, that basically we, we can go back to. Um, but yeah, totally. Uh, the data is very important, uh, but this is also very important. Uh, that person, you know, can help us get the proper data. Um, or if you're, if you're not doing, uh, for some reason, uh, you're not doing Zeta yet, uh, and you, you, you're doing just G selector at the moment, hey, that's fine, uh, but uh, we're gonna need to also work with you to get uh, the, uh, the, the so-called flat file or the configuration, how you're gonna communicate with that other automation system, we need to get it uh, uh, configured as well. So again, we need to work with you to ensure that that matches with, with your existing automation, at least until you, you move to Zeta if, if you're doing that. Absolutely. That's a great point. And just, you know, because that person also can also rope in the staff on site. So, for example, if there is that rogue part timer or traffic person, whoever it may be, they can help us say, hey, we're going to have a Zeta training session um, on Tuesday with the traffic department at 10 a.m. Can you make sure everybody's there on the Zoom call and all of that? So it's a, a great point to make, too. Um, one last thing I want to add, because I don't think we've actually we're very specific on this in regards to Zeta training. When we're on site, we do have on site Zeta training with you and your staff. Brian, his team breaks down everything based on departments or how you want the training sessions to go. And we truly are on site helping your team learn the software and operate the software. So, for example, we want to have a production meeting, a traffic meeting, an on air meeting. And then, you know, the morning shows, for example, will be there in the morning. I've myself, I went on some, some installs and you know, we were there at, you know, what was it, 5, 445 in the morning, 5 a.m. We just kind of sat and made sure that the morning show was comfortable running the morning show. So, for example, if they're like, oh, hey, something happened. It was like, what would you do? It goes, well, hit the stop button. And stop button, hit stop. Oh, good to know. Thank you. So stuff like that. Obviously, that was my experience. But, you know, yeah, there's some stuff in there, too. So we, we are here to help out. Flexible. And any questions, of course, I want, that's why I want to bring Brian and Adrian here. We're here to help out, answer all of your questions, all that good stuff. So uh, I think we're good in regards to comments and questions. Last cycle through. Yeah, we are good. And uh, Brian, Adrian, thank you so much for, for spending the time with me. Really appreciate it. As always, all these videos are on our archive at rcsworks.com slash rcs live. Or you can just go on our Facebook page right here and you can go break down by product and see all the great videos we've done in the past. And I will see you next Thursday. As always, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. It's our RCS live series. So thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.